Hi guys, I'm Adam, and uh, I'm sure many of you have heard about Lodash. It uh, seems like from day one at Full Stack Academy, it's something that was talked about all the time, and yet it's, uh, it's this mysterious tool that none of us really feel prepared to use yet. So I want to talk to you about how you can bring it into your code and clean up your code and how it can help you. So what is Lodash, why do you need it, and how should you use it? Uh, Lodash is a utility module that defines a set of methods that can perform common and often reused functions. Uh, people who are not coders like to think that coders have like this superpower of making programs. And if we were a superhero, I feel like we're most like Batman because like we don't, our real superpower is just that you're smart and prepared and hardworking. Uh, but Batman only goes as far as his utility belt can get him, so you need the best tools at your disposal. Uh, an example of a utility function that Lodash would provide is a camel case. Uh, the code above is what you would write if you were going to write your own camel case function. It's one that everyone here is capable of doing, but when you look at it firsthand, if it wasn't called camelize, you probably wouldn't know at first glance the purpose of this function. So uh, this can help you clean it up. You can bring in this one camel case function uh, it handles all of your test cases, your dashes, white space, you know, all of the, the side cases that you need to be aware of. Another uh, utility function that's really helpful is maxby. Uh, we all know math.max can be called on arrays to find the, the highest number, but if you use maxby, you can bring in objects and you can call iterator functions on what you're searching for and then measure the result of those iterator functions. Uh, or if you are specifically just looking for one quality on every object, you can put in a string and it will test all of them. It, it uh, iterates faster through objects than actually native JavaScript does. So there are a lot of benefits of just bringing it in for things like this. In JavaScript, everything is an object, and uh, dealing with JavaScript objects can be kind of a hassle. You know, they don't have classes, they, uh, are, they take up a lot of memory, it takes a long time to work through them. So Lodash can help you work with all the JavaScript objects. Uh, specifically copying objects is something that takes a lot of time and a lot of memory. Uh, so here we have Batman, his job, he's a superhero and his has powers is false. So if you wanted to make a copy of that, you'd say the flash is equal to Batman and then set the flash has superpowers equal true. But lo and behold, because JavaScript is passed by reference, uh, you've actually also set Batman's powers to true, uh, which we know that's not true. He just has a cool utility belt. Uh, so using the clone function, you can create an exact copy of it and then edit it without ruining your original data. Um, thus, truth and justice can prevail. Uh, another way of copying objects, I find this one actually much more useful for most cases, is using assign or extend. And uh, the example here, foo is created with a property as is bar, and then you place, pr we also have properties on their prototypes. And uh, assign will copy over every quality from uh, well, you have the initial object, and then it'll cop copy over every quality for objects following that onto the first object. Uh, and it will overwrite qualities, but the object will still maintain any other qualities it has that are not mentioned. Uh, and then extend is a kind of a more deep version of that. That uh, you can remember extend is more deep because it ends in a D. That actually goes to the object's prototype and copies all of that qualities over to the over to this object as well. Um, in JavaScript, all arrays are also objects, and sometimes they are hard to manage. So create, uh, an example of creating an array, you can use uh, Lodash's times function with unique, and you'll create an array that has a label with different numbers for every item. Um, also, looping through arrays can be kind of confusing sometimes. So because they're stored as an object, arrays have an index that starts at 0, 1, 2, 3. And those are the keys to get the values that are stored in the array. 
But you could just set a random quality on array, starting with an array of 100 is equal to 100, or an array of a string A can give you another value. And uh, luckily in Lodash, we have two ways to loop through these that gives you exactly what you're looking for. So you can either loop through it for each, which for each when called on an object that has a length, will loop through it array-wise, meaning it will start at zero and go until the length and run the function on each thing. If there is nothing there, it actually will stop running the function and won't return things that you don't want. But uh, for in is often a better case if you have extraneous information because it will go exactly to each value. It'll run object.keys and then loop through that array. Uh, also, working with functions, uh, mixin is a really good function to learn how to use. It uh, brings in methods onto an object or brings in methods onto a function. And it's a, it's a really good way to, if you're using Lodash, to customize your Lodash that you're using to have functions and utilities that you need. So in this case, vowels uh, filters out a string to only have the vowels. And what they've done is they've called mixin on an object using vowels, placing vowels. And now lodash in this case will have that function as lodash.vowels. So you can save all utilities that you want to add in that are specific to your case onto this utility function to use throughout your app. So it may seem like a lot of these things are things that you could do on your own, and they seem very simple. So why should you use Lodash? And one thing is that it makes your, all of your code more, de more declarative, and also optimizes runtime. So declarative code is code that should say what you're doing and not how you're doing it. Uh, a good example of this is in loops, when you use times. Ra if you are going to a specific number, if it's not a varying number that you're going to loop through, then you can just say times and the number of times you're going to do it and run the function. And this actually runs faster than the for loop does uh, in V8. And uh, it also helps you have function scoping rather than block scoping, because in a for loop, it's block scoping. And you need to use let or const to have block scope. Uh, whereas this will create a function so you won't have any scoping issues. And also the way V8 runs is if you have block scoping, it's currently only running ES5. So it's going to run it as if it's function scoped, but it does a check each time you use that variable, reassign that variable to make sure you are allowed to. So if you use the times function and now that it's function scoped, you don't have to run that check anymore. It has a separate scope. Uh, another way that you can keep really declarative code is with the chain method. Chain is a function given by Lodash that lets you add lots of Lodash functions in a row. And it will provide the result of one function into the next. So rather than having to read across this entire code, and even though it's in ES6 to make and you know easier to read, it's still a lot to read across to figure out the order in which it's happening. Whereas knowing that you're going to map it, then flatten it, then sort, and return the value is a much easier way to read this. Uh, Lodash is also optimized for speed. It's a lot faster than a lot of native JavaScript functions, which a lot of people think the native JavaScript has got to be the fastest way because the, any add-on is just going to use that native JavaScript. But that's actually not the case because Native functions are often optimized for the worst case scenario, whereas you can optimize for your average case scenario and often save a lot of time. Um, bind is a function that takes a really long time to run in V8. And uh, Lodash actually does a regex check where it searches the function to see if it uses the word this before it does a bind, because if it doesn't use the word this, there's no reason to bother with it. And uh, especially with working with higher order functions, if you have a function that takes a function as an argument, and then it eventually calls that function and uses bind to specify the scope, 
you're going to be calling that at a lot of functions that probably don't use this and really have no reason to be bound. So uh, this can actually save a lot of time. So uh, just comparing the native JavaScript to some other versions, Lodash is actually was made as a SQL to underscore, and LazyJS is a newer version that's been coming out. And uh, this shows you how, how many operations per millisecond they can run on certain functions. So you can see the different speeds. Um, you can see Lodash is not always the fastest. Lazy has been optimized for certain things, especially chaining. Lazy is supposed to be pretty quick. But LazyJS really doesn't have the uh, compatibility that Lodash does. As you can see, there have been 10 versions of Lazy, and they come out about once every four months, whereas Lodash has a new version every 18 days. The newest version came out two days ago. So how should you be using Lodash? Uh, it's a very big object that you're importing when you npm install and require Lodash in. So uh, it's important to keep it dry and keep it declarative, but you should also try to only require it where you need it. You can require only certain parts of Lodash, and that can keep your smaller functions a lot lighter. Um, a perfect example of this is here. Um, rather than pulling in chain and then running each of the functions, and you, you pulled in all of Lodash, even though you're using five functions, you can actually import each part of Lodash separately and then use mixin to incorporate the parts you want. And then you, actually, you have a very lightweight object, and you can get all of the functionality you need. Uh, it is important when doing this, though, to pull in the Lodash wrapper. You want to pull in the wrapper and then run mixin on that to pull in any other functionality you need, because uh, some functions do rely on other functions in Lodash. And if you pull in the wrapper, it will uh, find all of the sub functions that you need for the ones that you have there. Um, thanks. Uh, go import Lodash. And hopefully, this will help you with your interview questions and uh, just clean up all, your, all of your code. <laughs>